This will come as no surprise to many of you in the audience, but I think that to your average American, this will be a little bit surprising to hear. Um, I would make the argument that the American empire at this point in time is officially on the way out, and it's in steep decline. It's in rapid decline. Um, now, there are obviously massive positive uh, impacts of that, but then there's also things that are just like, you just look at it and you go, it's... It's mind-boggling that the people who run the country are so insanely incompetent and inept and have no idea what they're doing that we've gotten to this place. So let me give you a little story here from Asia Times and then explain why this is so crucially important. Iraq will join China's signature Belt and Road Infrastructure Investment Project, the country's prime minister said Monday in Beijing. Uh, Adel Abdel Mahdi made the announcement in a meeting with Chinese President Xi, Xi uh, Jinping during a state visit. Quote, Iraq has gone through war and civil strife and is grateful to China for its valuable support, said Mahdi in comments uh, broadcast on Chinese state media outlets CCTV. Iraq is willing to work together in the One Belt, One Road framework, he added. Uh, Xi said that the two... Countries would cooperate on oil and infrastructure projects. Quote, China would like from a new starting point together with Iraq to push forward with the China-Iraq strategic partnership. So they already do $30 billion in trade. Um, and that's obviously going to go up. And here's, I mean, th here's the gist of this story, okay? So back in the day... Back in the day before the U.S. was the world's uh, empire, the sole superpower, the way that empires, you know, would rise and fall, they, I mean, they would basically conquer everybody. So what they would do is they would invade a place and say, uh, all right, you're now under our control and you owe us a tax and an empire would expand. And this is the history of, of empires. It was basically um, an invasion and then complete and utter authoritarian control, and you pacify the population. And so this is, you know, you pick the empire, and that's how this was done. You want to talk about the Roman Empire or whoever, um, Persian Empire, like, this is what it was. This is what it was. Uh, and there's been countless empires like that, just rise and fall, rise and fall, rise and fall. Um, now, what happened is that as, as time went by, that became... I don't know the right word for it, unpalatable. It became too egregious, too in your face, uh, too obvious that what you're doing is immoral and unethical and wrong. And so there was kind of an evolution in how empires became empires. And what you see in the U.S. is a totally new approach to being an empire where instead of just, in, in most instances, instead of just invading, taking over a country, demanding that it's now part of us and then, you know, jacking all the resources and, ta and taxing the people and whatnot. What we do is, in most instances, we get corrupt allies from the respective regions that we're taking over, and they're a proxy for us. So in other words, instead of, like, you know, think old school British Empire style, oh, we just, like, we just are taking over India. And we're here. <laughs> and we're running stuff now. Think like, you know, oh, the U.S. has like a, a puppet dictator from a given region, say South America, somewhere in South America. We have our own puppet dictator and we technically control the country and we are the world's sole superpower. This is like part of our sphere of influence, but it's run through a proxy of somebody who's from the area, from the region, from that country and so it gives us enough plausible deniability where it doesn't appear as egregious. It doesn't appear as bad. It doesn't appear as immoral and unethical. Because you go, us? No, we're not controlling all these places all around the world. Sure, we're allies with the government, but what do you mean? We believe in freedom and democracy, and that's why we're supporting these authoritarian fascist leaders all over the place. See, they don't say that second part. But the idea is, yeah, we'll just call you a democratic country even if you're not, as long as you're an ally of ours and you're, you know, our corrupt puppet who lets us jack the resources and, and control the region, 
As long as you let that happen, we'll call you a democracy and we'll say you're on, on, on the good guy team. So that was the evolution of empire building. It used to be, no, we're just going to invade you and take you over and you're going to have to look at, you know, my fat face every day and it's going to be, doesn't matter, oh, you're a different religion, you're a different race, irrelevant, I run this now. Then it evolved to, oh, no, no, we don't do that. See, we're more sophisticated about it. We prop up puppet allies who are corrupt, who will do our bidding and run the country, but it's really us running it even though this is the face of, the face of who runs it is from the country, which makes it, you know, the population is pacified easier that way. Well, now, and this is really fascinating, China has taken it the next step. So what do I mean by that? This is the next step in, in empire building. It's not just, oh, we'll put in a puppet, you know, who, who does our bidding and uh, we control the country even though we're not physically there. What they're doing is they're offering legit economic development, infrastructure development, and in return, you know, it's basically empire through debt. So it's like, we're going to do all these things for you, and they're going to be real things. It's going to, you know, it's going to be uh, economic development, infrastructure development. It's gonna, Your country's going to look massively modernized. And in return for this, they're basically getting, like, allegiance. Economic allegiance, if you will. And it's it's control through debt. And it's uh, it's kind of a brilliant evolution, a brilliant strategy, in the same way that for empire building that the U.S. did, we were the next logical step, the evolution where it was puppet dictators who are under our thumb as opposed to us just physically being there. That was a brilliant evolution, and this is the next step. And so at this point, I mean, this is just like so above and beyond what the U.S. is doing. Now, let, let me be clear across the board here. Empire's bad. <laughs> Empire is a bad thing. Being a superpower is not a good thing. B subjugation, taking away human rights, exploitation, jacking resources, all these things are bad, negative, and shouldn't be done. But what we're seeing right now is, without question, the rapid decline of the U.S. empire and the, you know, a Chinese empire kind of fit, taking its place. And so we go to Iraq, we illegally and offensively invade the country, kill minimum hundreds of thousands of civilians, waste $7 trillion, uh, really have not much to show for it. And then what happens after all that? China just gets to swoop in and say, oh, we're going to be your ally, and we're going to help you build infrastructure and do economic development, and then we're going to have a brilliant uh, partnership. So we have been too heavy-handed. We have been terrible at managing the empire, and it's the inevitable rise and fall. I mean, it always happens, and it'll happen in China at some point, too, um, but... I, and the timelines, I don't know, and nobody knows, and if they tell you they know they're lying, but it is crystal clear that we are, you know, an empire in rapid decline. And there, again, there are upsides of that, but just know that there's a, a sea change happening, and, and the global world order, if you will, is uh, in a realignment, and it can get very, very, very ugly before it ever gets better.